gentleman, my colleague from Arizona, Mr. Gosar, is recognized for five minutes for questioning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, you can make statistics that tell you anything you want. That's, that's, how you, that's how they operate. So you have to be very, very careful on that. But I'm going to be a little more redundant. The District of Columbia was granted limited autonomy in 1973 by Congress, who at the time did not wish to intervene in the day-to-day -day governance of the city. This granted grant of limited autonomy can be revoked by Congress at any time. Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17 of the United States Constitution provides Congress with the exclusive jurisdiction over the District of Columbia. Recently, the district is experiencing rising crime across the board, from sexual abuse to motor theft to homicides. Now, that may not be 30 years from now, but it has been over the last couple of years. DC is a mess, and its leaders have proven incapable of governance. The crime in our nation's capital is out of control. It's time for Congress to reassert itself as DC's proper constitutionally mandated sovereign. That's why I'm reintroducing the DC Home Rule Improvement Act, which will further empower Congress to overturn reckless DC laws. Now, Mr. Mendelson, I got a series of uh, things for you. The DC Council voted in 2020 to permanently rename a street adjacent to the White House, Black Lives Matter Plaza, quote. I would like to convey some anecdotes and some information about the organization Black Lives Matter. In 2016, BLM protesters injured 21 police officers in St. Paul, Minnesota. On se September 10, 2020, a group of BLM protesters attempted to storm a hospital in Los Angeles in order to attack two police officers having emergency surgery after suffering gunshot wounds in an unprovoked attack near a train station. Black Lives Matter is violently anti-police. They, 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 are, they are a race-baiting cartel that has racketeered billions of dollars. As of recently, that is estimated to be $90 billion. Mr. Mendelson, do you know how many deaths and billions of dollars in damages were caused as a result of Black Lives Matter and the Antifa protests in 2020? Yes or no? Uh, I don't know, but it wasn't named after the organization. It was named after the concept of Black well, Lives I mean, Matter. Well, I it, mean, it's hard to configure, but the actual was $2 billion and 18 deaths. What kind of message do you think that commemorating a group with such a vicious and violent history sends to people of Washington, D.C.? Now, I, I, I heard your, you know, your comment. It's not about the the group, it's about its, its theoretical prospects. Now, would you name a plaza after a group that contributed to the deaths of 18 people and $2 billion in damages? Uh, no, but we didn't. Well, I, I, I get it, but I mean, there's a synonymous problem here. Mr. Pendleton, how does BLM violence and threats against po police affect morale? It, well, I, I don't care who's uh, bringing the violence. If people yep. are, are being violent against police officers, it doesn't really matter to me what kind of flag they're waving. Uh, if they're committing violence against police officers, they need to be held accountable. I, I appreciate that comment. Now, Mr. Allen, this year you, co you sponsored the D.C. Achieves Establishment Act, right? correct? I'm sorry, Carson, I couldn't hear which bill you said. Sorry, I, 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 I lost my voice this weekend. Uh, you sponsored the D.C. Achieves Establishment Act, correct? I'm going to assume that you are correct. Yes. This bill requires the mayor to establish a fund to provide grants to undocumented students. Did I read that correctly? I think I, I was a co-sponsor of this bill, I believe. Okay. The one you're referencing. We'll keep going. Okay. Now, and these grants would cover tuition and non-tuition expenses for illegal, to illegal aliens, true? I, mean, I might be having trouble hearing you, sir. The, you trailed off at the end. I just couldn't okay. hear you. These grants would cover tuition and non-tuition expenses to illegal aliens. I believe that for individuals that are coming to the District of Columbia, it helps provide education. No, it's for, for that population base. For so under this bill, residents. while American citizens across the country are facing student loan crises, illegal aliens would get their school paid for without the ex expectation that they would even have to pay it back. This seems, seems very contradictory. I mean, it's very uh, offensive. Now, I, I've got one more last thing that I want to look at. Mr. Mendelson, I hope I said it right, and Mr. Allen. A question was asked uh, about sentencing, and you may, may got ups, upset about, and you know, this is up to the dist or district or to the uh, US, US attorney, attorney, right? Mm -hmm. So how am I supposed to believe this? So you're upset at the sentencing from the US attorney but yet you put forward a sentencing package that was very different. I, how do we 
validate or how do we reconcile those? Well, actually, the issue of sentencing is what the U.S. attorney asks for. Mm -hmm. The issue of charging is whether the U.S. attorney chooses to charge. Um, and uh, um, so my, my, my response to the congressman was that uh, he was lamenting that prosecutions, nobody prosecutes. I think he said something like that. Well, that's up to the U.S. attorney whether to charge. And actually, the sentencing is a function of the court right. and what the U.S. attorney asked for and, of course, what the court ultimately but decides. They're, but they're all interrelated. Well, they're interrelated. But, you know, let me, I just, because uh, I have this in front of me, you know, the Senate staffer who was... Uh, was seriously assaulted mm -hmm. last week, which I very, very unfortunate, and I hope he fully recovers. Under the current criminal code, he would be charged with assault with intent to kill. That's a 15-year ma maximum. Under the revised criminal code, the soft on sentencing bill, he would be charged with attempted murder, and that's a 22 and a half year penalty plus enhancements, because I think he was armed, which means 27 years. Current code is 15 years. The revised code that was soft on crime is 27 years. But the decision to charge is not ours. It's not the district government. It's the U.S. attorney, and the sentencing decision decision is by the court, which is federally appointed. I got gotcha. you. Thank you very much. For Thank you. Fight.